welcome back to a smaller but still mighty comparison between two single out aircraft, the newest Airbus A220 versus Boeing 737 MAX. But before we do, let's understand the birth of these two aircraft. In the early 2000s, Bombardier started to study larger single-out aircraft and eventually launched their new C-Series in 2006. With oil prices high, airlines were attracted by the C-Series' new technologies such as composite fuselage and new wings, which brought a 10-15% efficiency improvement but were wary of buying aircraft from an untested manufacturer. They turned to Airbus and Boeing for a competing product. Airbus made the move in 2010, choosing to invest little capital and re-engine their popular A320 with the same new engines. With the A320 Neo, Airbus has a single out able to compete in efficiency without high transition costs and commonality for airlines. Also, as the re-engine is cheaper with higher reliability expected, it attracted a huge number of orders from many A320 operators, as well as American Airlines, previously an all-Boeing operator. Boeing were eyeing two options. As the 737 was nearing its structural limit, upgrading the 737 would still bring development cost nearly 5 times as much as A320 Neo. But the other option, an all-new airplane, would bring even greater costs, or the operator base of all 737 airplanes would be lost. After American forced Boeing into re-engine, Boeing formally launched their 737 MAX, the fourth iteration of the reliable 737 workhorse. And so, the re-engined and proven Boeing is going head-to-head -head with an all-new clean sheet design. Following a lawsuit by Boeing placing tariffs on A220, Airbus took 50.01% shares in the C-Series program and renamed it A220. In this comparison, we'll compare the two closest competing variants of both, the smaller 737-7 versus the A220-300 variant. But before we do, if you are new to the channel, a warm welcome and stay tuned for more such great epic comparisons, detailed analysis, as well as some more great new plane spotting content on the way. Hitting subscribe will go a long way in spurring me to make more of such great videos. For even more great aviation content, head over to the new Airplane Productions Instagram page, home to quick aviation tidbits and the latest developments via the story feature. Also, given the current coronavirus situation as of time of upload, I would wish all the best of safety. If you would like to contribute, I have included a donation link in the description to the Global Giving Organization, a trusted site for donations. Do check it out in the description below. Right, let's kickstart this epic one. Starting with performance, the 737 is inherently a larger model, with the Dash 7 having higher performances. 737-7 flies 3850 nautical miles in a 2 class 153 packs layout. Or with higher payloads, the airplane can take a maximum of 172. As A220 is designed as a smaller aircraft from the ground up, it has performance more optimized for this lower end single out market. Flying 3,350 nautical miles while carrying 141 passengers in a similar two class layout. In a one class max seating, it carries 160 passengers. All in all, the Max 7 offers more range, but may offer too much for this market segment.
both are powered by newer, more fuel-efficient engines. The A220 is powered by Pratt & Whitney's pure-power-geared turbofan PW1500G engines, with a fan diameter of 79 inches on the A220. The 737 uses the CFM LEAP engines, which have proven more reliable. The engine is used on Airbus's own A320neo, but due to the 737's low ground clearance, CFM had to shrink the engine. Leap 1B engine on 737-7 produces more thrust at 26,000 pounds and measures 69 inches in diameter. The smaller fan results in lower bypass and pressure ratios compared to engines found on competing aircraft. While this does add less weight to the aircraft, it does reduce its power plant efficiency. In terms of efficiency, taking a look at the airplane production's charts of efficiency, over usual one-hour short domestic flights this aircraft typically operates on, the 737-7 burns around 1.94 litres for every 100 km flown, while the smaller 820-300 burns 1.85 litres for every 100 km flown per passenger in a typical two-class layout for both. Per trip, the A220 burns 0.2 kilos less fuel per kilometre at 2.30, compared to 2.51 for the 737-7. The reason why A220 is more efficient, well the aircraft was designed from the ground up to be operated on short-haul flights with lower capacity, thus it is optimised in its range payload capabilities. 737-7 on the other hand is a simple shrink of the larger Dash 8 with unnecessary range capability, thus it is penalised with higher seatmount cost overall. All in all, the A220 is simply the more efficient aircraft. Moving on to cabins, another area where the A220 clearly wins out. The Airbus A220 has a cabin that stands out in the small aircraft market, with a long list of unique and class-leading features. Larger overhead bins, higher ceilings, bigger galleys and lavatories, larger windows and wide seats of up to 19 inches makes the A220 the most comfortable aircraft for passengers to fly on. 737 on the other hand has an updated Boeing Sky interior with curved overhead bins and new mood lighting giving a more spacious feel. However, the aircraft is actually less spacious per passenger, with narrower seats of 17 inches, as well as hilariously small galleys and toilets. Both are available with in-flight connectivity and entertainment solutions. But overall, it is the A220 with its modern cabin that provides superior passenger experience even on shortest flights. In terms of advantages and disadvantages, as the A220 is the newest design tailored for this market, it simply has the lowest cost when flying these shorter routes. Also, passengers enjoy its high levels of passenger comfort, while airlines can use the aircraft to open up new untested markets now with longer ranges. However, as the A220 is new, the aircraft doesn't have a huge operator base, while pilots do not share same type rating with other Airbus single R family members. 737-7 does share many airframe parts with other 737 models, lowering operational costs, while pilots from the larger models can transition to the Dash 7. However, as the FAA now mandates that simulator training is needed, pilot training costs will still be high. Furthermore, the aircraft has performances which simply do not best fit into this small single R segment. And if there is evidence, it is the number of orders both have received. The 737-7 has received 82 orders, while the larger A220 variant alone, the Dash 300, received 505 orders. To sum up, the airlines are voting with their order books in favour for the A220. So then, which is the true best small single out? Well, 737 is really a compromise Boeing had to make to compete in the lower-end market. 
as it is a simple shrink, the aircraft is de-optimized compared to the larger 737s, with performance too high to serve this market well. A220 on the other hand is optimized as a larger regional jet and smaller single hour. All in all, with its perfect performances and highest efficiency, the A220 sets a standard in the single hour segment, and is the benchmark by which all other competing single hours are judged. Do you agree with this verdict? And if you don't, why so? Do comment below. Thanks for tuning in and to meet next time. Wishing everyone a truly clear sky ahead.